this is Prophetic Paradigm. I'm excited to uh, have with us again uh, two exciting apostles to the body of Christ. Not only the intercession and evangelism, but God has blessed them uh, to be in the body of Christ for such a time as this. And the focus of Prophetic Paradigm, of course, is to discuss the fivefold ministry and its linkages to um, the contemporary setting of today, biblically as well as historically. And today, we have with us Apostle, again, Robert and Anna Stagmo. They're with us. Um, they are apostles to the state of Maryland, and we're excited to have them here to share uh, just their understanding of intercession and just some of the experience that they've um, uh, encountered, not only throughout Maryland, but around the country and around the world. I'm excited to have them here, and I want them to just take a few minutes and share um, with with you and with us who they are how and how they came into intercession and what is their passion for intercession not just intercession but also the prophetic um, and I want them to just share a little bit about um, just your background and how you can come into uh, intercession the prophetic well I, I came into intercession as soon as I was baptized in the Holy Spirit wow. we had no teaching on that this was back in 1972 with the great outpouring of the charismatic movement at that time. And um, from the very first move of the Holy Spirit upon me, I just began praying. And I, I uh, received the gift of tongues within like two weeks. And I just couldn't stop praying. I didn't want to stop praying. It was just, uh, it was like, it was one with me, sure. you know, just, so I just moved and uh, saw the power that was in it. We, uh, we decided to have prayer partners back in the day, and my prayer partner and I would talk every morning and say, uh, well, who, who have you talked with that needs saving that you heard about this morning? So, and that's the way it was, and the, the move of the fiery move of the Holy Spirit in those days. So we'd pinpoint someone, we began praying for them, and I believe within a week they'd be saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. Wow. And then we'd get someone else. Or maybe we'd get someone new every day and add it to the list. But they were coming. People were just coming. The fire was building because everybody had a new fresh testimony. And everybody wanted to have the power. And everybody wanted to be on fire with the love for Jesus. And it just mounted and moved out and... We went from a, a prayer group of a home, it wasn't our prayer group, the pastor was still meeting in his home uh, because the church wouldn't receive it. Wow. And um, we were about 25 people when we came to the Lord and were baptized in the Holy Spirit. But within, I'd say three months, there were so many of us that he said, all right, come into the church on Sunday, pray, and I was going to just bring forth the teaching on this. As a profession, as a professional, you were a school teacher. Yes, I was. How did that, how did that, um, that, that whole charismatic kind of outpouring, how did that gel with your, you know, <laughs> Well, it was really intellect? difficult because I really <laughs> wanted to preach to the children. <laughs> I really wanted to win them to the Lord all the time because I was in the inner city. Right. The problems were just like they are today. Sure great and so many absentee parents sure lots of drugs crime and um and so it was interesting because a lot of them were churched sure. so it was easy that uh, they would i would ask for show and tell i was teaching second and third grade I got they would begin telling me how was your week and went to church. oh tell us about going to church and then they would say something and then one person would i would draw it out of them as they would speak about jesus back and forth you know and uh, so the power of God moved you right into action. Right in, there was no doubt about it. I I didn't have any books, any teachings in those days. The pastors that were baptized in the Holy Spirit were as new as the people in the pews. Only they'd had the training in the Bible studies, and we didn't have that. But it was it was just so dynamic. We wanted to spend every single day in church, didn't we? I mean, we went from who wants to go to church on Sunday to you can't keep us out. In fact, that first year, everybody in the church brought their turkeys to church. We had, we had Thanksgiving dinner together because we couldn't stand being alone. We were just so family-oriented with the body. That's how it is 
when you're really moving in the Holy Spirit. That, that other right. thing, then it turns into a program that later. Right. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about just loving to be with the family of God. And having the free flow of the Spirit in your yes. life. Yes. It sends you, it sends you out um, to, 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 for action, so to speak. It does? Yeah. Yes, sir. I, I grew up in the church, in the denominational church, and I, I it's probably every position that a layman can hold in that church. Uh, by the age of 30, I was on the official board. I was running a very large youth program. And uh, the problem was, I didn't know who Jesus was. I was a church person, but I wasn't a Christian. Yeah. And after I met my lovely wife and married her in 1971, early 1972, God really called us. Now, we didn't realize it, but when we wrote our wedding vows, which we wrote our own, we said, Lord, we are your children. Take us and use us. We will walk your highways and build your bridges. <laughs> now, we didn't even know who we were at the time. Three, but, uh, three weeks later, that's when yeah. he baptized me in the Holy Spirit. And, and I, yeah. was, I was uh, going with her, but those people were a little strange. And when they, <laughs> when they spoke in other tongues, my hair went up on the back of my neck. And uh, But I knew they were sincere and I liked them. And some of the Bible things they talked about, that was familiar to me. So I was comfortable in the group uh, going and... Uh, then my dear wife challenged me one day and she said, uh, well, when did you get baptized in the Holy Spirit? I said, well, I'm already, that's already. She said, oh, really? Uh, well, when did you decide that Jesus was Lord? I said, well, I'm not really sure of that. And she said, well, then you can't, you're not a Christian. And I said, what? <laughs> of course I'm a Christian. I've been a Christian all my life. I was raised in the church. But uh, within a couple of weeks, God got really a hold of me. And uh, through a very dramatic happening, which I won't go into at the moment, but I found my son, and I prided myself as a good parent. Um, anyhow, uh, the Lord told me, I went to, the, to a church service that night because God really was drawing me. And it was a Wednesday night, we always went to Boy Scouts, but this night we, we went to the service. And the sermon that night was on how the Father has to be submitted to Jesus Christ for the family to be submitted wow. to Him. And, you know, it was a setup. Was yeah, of course. God's <laughs> always setting us up. God's and, always setting us up. Uh, and so, uh, I, in the offertory, I said, uh, Jesus, tell me what to do. Whatever it is, I'll do it. Well, that's been the motto of my life. Jesus, tell me what to do, and whatever it is, I'll do it. And he told me, right in the back of my head, I knew exactly how to handle the situation. And I followed his instructions exactly, and my son's a, a wonderful man of the Lord, and uh, he's a... Uh, senior warden at his Episcopal church and leader of worship. Um, and so God did a miraculous thing, but I knew that God had spoken to me. Sure. And yeah. that was the difference. And almost from that moment on, we were propelled into some kind of ministry work. Uh, it wasn't long before we were leading a Bible study and then very instrumental in a revival in that denominational church where we were. And, um, then we moved on to another church and the Lord put us in charge of a very large praise and worship meeting, teaching on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And we ended up within a couple of years of developing a multi-level uh, teaching program for anybody that came in the door all the way through very mature people. We're teaching Bible studies and Hebrew language and all sorts of things. And then God spoke to us uh, uh, to start a Christian school. And at first we rejected the idea, you know, but it just kept encroaching on us to where we could do like it. Uh, put it away. And so we went to our pastor and we said, uh, you know, God has called us to start a Christian school. And he wasn't sure. And he said, go find somebody that will tell you no. Hmm. And we knew right away who he was talking about. It was a lovely couple. We loved them in church, but they, we were always on the opposite sides of every issue. So we called them, we went to see them, and uh, I explained to them what God was saying to us, and this fellow went on a rant about how the, all the wrong things about Christian schools, and, and I thought, oh man, I was sinking, you know, in the chair. And then suddenly, abruptly, he turned, he said, but what you're talking about is right. <laughs> and so we knew, and, and uh, that, that put us on an odyssey of uh, with nothing, with absolutely nothing. We started a 12-year Christian school, first year, 12 grades. Um, 
we ran it for a year and then we reformatted and, and uh, changed things and the story's in this little booklet that we've uh, that we've made about how we fasted and prayed and God brought to us everything we needed wow. and uh, so we ran that school for five years and then uh, God pulled us out of that one and uh, set us uh, aside for a, a few months and then we saw that he wanted us to go ahead with the ministry so we started a church and a school and we pastored the church and ran the school for another eight years and then the Lord omnipotently pulled us out of that one and we thought well we'll We'll just another ministry will come sure, along sure. but uh, we sat for eight years so we were part of a church we were active we were teaching Sunday school and, and doing nice things but we didn't have an active ministry of our own and during that time he put us into such uh, professions my wife was teaching inner city I was a landlord in the inner city where I had never been before and I got to learn much about the city of Baltimore and the people in, in the city uh, so he was preparing us in a way we didn't even understand. So. And it was really exciting for him because uh, he, he baptized more babies, oh, yeah. uh, delivered people from demonic spirits, Got just going down, saved. collecting rent and talking to people uh, who were in tragic situations face to face. It was just amazing. The ministry, when you get down where the rubber meets the road, sure. where the people are living, that is that's where the ministry needs to be because most of those people are not coming into the church yeah, yeah. because they don't fit the paradigm of the best dressed people in town that's and right. look at the, the holy people in the church and uh, they need people to go to them. Okay. I guess that's why Jesus said go to you.